Cassandra and I broke up two years ago and we didn't speak with each other from then until this podcast. The conversation is very emotional. You were like the only person I was ever in love with. We talk about how difficult it was to move on. It sucked. <laughs> but I couldn't just delete you completely from my life. I'm sorry. You should be. <laughs> and if we still have feelings for each other. Did you ever want to reach out? Did you ever even like, did I ever cross your mind or something? This is a special podcast. Are you ready to take the blindfolds off? Yes. How you feel? Weird. I have a question. Yeah. You said that when we broke up was one of the hardest things that you did in your life. Why? Oh, that's a very complicated question. <laughs> but um, for a lot of reasons. <laughs> oh, this is interesting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one is uh, oh <laughs> one is because you were like the only person I was ever in love with and so <laughs> I mean it was difficult to kind of let you go uh, but also for other reasons the other reason was that you were also my best friend and like when we just stopped talking I couldn't talk to my best friend and like tell him it sucks because <laughs> yeah um, and I also think, this is kind of weird, but I also think that in some ways I kind of, you became part of my identity, which is a very bad thing, <laughs> because, I don't know, you shouldn't let people, like, do that. How long it took <laughs> you to recover after we broke up? Define recover. Uh, I don't know. For you to not be thinking too much about a breakup or be so emotionally. Mm, let me think. Wow. Oh, I saw you last time, February. Yeah, one and a half year ago. I think uh, September or October was the time when I was like, okay, um, like I was okay. Six months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you? <laughs> <laughs> A week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it took me, I think, a month. But uh, it was kind of easier, I think, for me yeah. than you because I was in a different country. I had to uh, not think anything and work. Uh, yeah. So it was kind of easier to escape. Uh, and also you... You are not that active on social media, so I think it was easier to kind of shut you off. Yeah. How did that you were? It was, it sucked. <laughs> it, <laughs> it, I don't know. Like, I was super stupid in the beginning because I was actually like kind of, it will sound weird, but I was watching you. Like, I... Yeah, you're active on social media, so I I was, like, being involved. And then I realized that... That made everything worse? Yeah, it was terrible. Like, it was... I don't even know. I mean, I think it was part... I mean, for... You probably didn't go through different stages, but I think one of the stages that, like, I went through... What is that? Your question. Anyway, one of the stages that I went through after the breakup was just, like, being super sad, obviously. And, like, I feel like in that moment, I just had to do what I needed to do to, I don't know, be okay. Well, I guess. When you felt super sad? When you were watching me on social media? No, I mean in the beginning of the breakup. So it was like, I don't know, in some way, I think I just wanted to be close to you. So that's 
I guess, how I tried to do it, which was a very bad idea. <laughs> but then I figured out that it's terrible and I just have to, like, completely distance myself. And after, um, in the summer, I kind of decided to just, uh, like, close the social media. So I, like, oh, I... Close, generally, the social media or just unfollow from everywhere no you were already unfollowed <laughs> 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 but um i um, no i mean like delete the apps from my phone and actually like i i didn't use instagram for nine months it was pretty cool uh yeah it was i mean once i started just stop being involved in in your life in some way it was easier to just let go yeah how you want i sent you a text and you read like i'm not sure if this is the way that i wanted to meet after one and a half year in a podcast yeah so how, s- <laughs> how 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 you wanted to meet I you were know, saying I that you were romanticizing i said as well that i was romanticizing the moment how we were Went to meet again because actually, guys, we broke up in a very good terms. It was because I was going to United States to do YouTube, and you were going to study and travel. So, um, I, <laughs> I was like, I thought of different stuff. Like, I think most of them were either like me somehow finding you or you somehow like finding me but without I the random other pers- places <laughs> mm, no i didn't think that would be very i i i didn't think that would happen i i thought that it would be like the odds are very low that i see you in a random place like without it being planned but yeah i don't know <laughs> what you thought when you i send you a text after by the way you were sending me texts here and there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for the last one and a half year. And I told you from before that I would never respond. Yeah. And no, I didn't you, respond. Yeah. And I was watching every single message. <laughs> it, I just, I know I kind of broke the deal. And I, I don't know if you were mad or anything, but it was just, this will sound very dramatic, <laughs> but it was my way to survive, quote, quote, because I, I don't know, I figured after we broke up that I can't, like, I'm a very communicative person. <laughs> so when I feel something, I, I just, I need to get it out or it would just eat me alive. So that was just my way of coping. And I'm sorry <laughs> if it sucked <laughs> for you. It also did suck for me because, I don't know, I mean, I did know like cognitively I knew in my head how you're feeling that I was not responding to you it depends in the beginning I was like I get it um but like I don't know I wished you a happy birthday this year you didn't even respond and you didn't wish me a happy birthday and that kind of made me mad because what the fuck (laughs) one (laughs) sec but I mean I don't know it's I just feel like I would have done some stuff differently definitely like even from before we broke up like i would definitely i don't know be more uh wait i'm missing the word another question wait i didn't answer what i, I didn't say I, what I'm i sorry. wanted to say yeah you should be <laughs> 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 but um i just i don't know i would have asked for a like cut off date <laughs> for this not talking thing because I was like okay like at some point I was completely fine I was like like I was living my life six months later or that was more late no like more later and I was like completely fine and I just wanted I don't know how to explain it but I couldn't just delete you completely from my life it, they, that's not how I work like as a person in general like d- d- anyway And I was super mad that I couldn't just, like, tell you this is happening in my life. And, like, I don't know. It was, it sucked. I I mean, at some point... So you were mad at me that I was not responding. Yeah, at some point I was (laughs) mad at you. 
It just felt like you didn't care. Which, it's okay if you didn't care because we broke up. Like, I knew that you wouldn't care. Why would you care? But at the same time, it's not very nice. If, <laughs> I don't know, someone you lived so many stuff with just feels like they don't care. But I get it. So I can see your perspective, I think. I didn't tell you my perspective. Yeah, you're right. I just assumed your... So what is your perspective? <laughs> the next question is... <laughs> no, I, it's my question now. You have to answer it. So the question, frame it better for me to answer it. Yeah, so what was going through your mind? Like, when you saw the messages or, for example, I don't know, did you ever want to reach out? Did you ever even, like, did I ever cross your mind or something? It was tempting uh, a lot of times to reach out because some messages was like, uh, like really emotional. Some <laughs> other were like random. Oh, I'm doing this, <laughs> <laughs> but especially in the beginning, I was like, I, I, I was, I thought that that would be the best for you because cutting ties kind of. I don't know, maybe I assume wrong because I operate like that, but uh, I think if you, I was not involved in kind of in your life, it was going to be, because it was very strong, everything, I would do hard and all this stuff. So just being back, I was sending you messages and I couldn't imagine like, oh, talking once a month via message, oh, how are you? Like, uh, this is kind of disgusting. Hi. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like it. Uh, I'm catching up for I'm I don't catch up with anybody. I'm like when I was like when I'm going back to Cyprus or when she's coming here, I'm going to catch up and talk and like see how each other is doing, not in messages or video call like in real life. We we did meet through video call. Ah, oh, no, we didn't meet through video call. We. I mean, <laughs> I met you years ago. No, but I mean that we developed a friendship first and a relationship i mean later like through video calls i i, I know but to answer uh, the thing uh for the first six seven months it was uh, maybe a year it was i thought it was the best thing to not talk but later it was kind of convenient to not talk or something i was like so busy with all my stuff i was like okay, I can reach out and talk for one time and like catch up, but it's kind of not how I want to do it. So I don't know. It's it's interesting. What do you think about how we broke up that we filmed uh, the last uh, time that we saw each other in the airport when I was going to the United States? No, I was going to... Oh, yeah, yeah when yeah. you were going to Nether Netherlands where <laughs> I was going with my friend to Bulgaria yeah so um, what do you think about that filming I I didn't think that much about it but I would do it differently I would how I would not film because <laughs> I feel like the last time I saw you Okay, this is a longer question than that you probably thought, but I will tell you. <laughs> I, like, before, during the time we were together and also, like, before in my life, I had a very hard time being present. And I remember you didn't, which was cool. Like, I felt like in a lot of moments you were very present and you were very grateful and it was, like, super cool. But there were a lot of times that I couldn't, like, m for the majority of the time, I couldn't be there with you. Um, and... I I really worked on that and I am very grateful to say that I feel like I can do that now. And so with knowing this now, I would want to just be more present before like the last time I saw you. But I guess it wasn't impossible then. <laughs> but uh, I was thinking about it after we broke up a lot. Like how fucked up I am I that I, I wanted to film the last <laughs> Did you regret it? Bit. Uh, I'm not sure. It seems that I... Apparently <laughs> not. Yeah, because we are doing this after. <laughs> but it felt kind of wrong. I, I, feel, 
And a lot of times, a lot of things that I was doing uh, back then, it was, I was not very comfortable. I didn't, I, I, I really wanted to whatever do the stuff that I wanted, videos and stuff, and I was desperate. I didn't, I, I wanted so bad to do the videos and like to focus on that. And I didn't know the right way. And a lot of times I was putting a lot, like I remember our relationship was, a bit difficult on the aspect of me focusing all our life on on, on TikTok and all this stuff because it became it was fun activities to do and also together. But yeah, now I changed kind of the thing. I, do. I, I don't use the phone. I just make YouTube videos only sometimes when I need to use the phone for stuff to post and upload. But yeah, now it's more relaxed. But back then it was like, we we'll have to do three TikToks per day. We we'll have to do this. We we'll have to do this. We we'll have to film everything. We we'll have to. And I was not comfortable. I didn't know what what was the right thing to do. But anyway, that was uh, a, probably a wrong thing to do to film it. But I keep doing the wrong thing because. <laughs> um, I am surprised with what you said because I feel like I I would imagine that now you would be even more like um i don't know like busy all the time all oh, the business uh, one thing though when i was with you i was thinking oh yeah in the future i will be less uh i will succeed and, <laughs> and then i will have more time <laughs> I will do, and it gets even worse day by day so by it day. is so you are more busy but in a different way in, in a way that i like not in a way That's that nice. That's yeah. cool. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> so you were uh, doing the story of Cassandra and I, I started, I wanted to, I was a TikToker when you met me. I was like, had 15,000 followers on TikTok, something. When we met in Scotland, something like that. So No. Something like, anyway, so I was doing I social. I didn't know that though. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing social media before I met Cassandra. And after we met, we were doing kind of, I kind of drag you, I don't know, inspired, I don't know, is it a bad thing or good, but, uh, and you started doing social media and you had whatever, 50,000 followers or, and like a lot of people knew us as Fidias and Cassandra. And that was like, everyone was identifying you as Fidias girlfriend or something like that. Yeah. So how did that, how, fell after we broke up and like people like still labeling yours. I don't know, like talk about. Yeah, um, that's true. Uh, like people definitely labeled me like that. But I also feel like I have responsibility for that because it was a lot of the stuff I did were my choices. And like, I don't regret in general, I don't regret stuff I do even if they're mistakes because I feel like it's good <laughs> to do them. Uh, but I've learned that, for example, one of the ways I said before that I ad identified with you a lot, I think was also affected by this, by the, I don't know, the way that, uh, like, the dynamic of the relationship on social media was also very, like, oh, it's Cassandra Fidias's girlfriend. So it wasn't like, it's Cassandra, and, like, people knew me as me. But they knew me as your girlfriend, which is one of the things that I don't like. And uh, I guess one of the reasons I just kind of withdrew from everything because I, I just wanted to like maybe dial that down in some way. Um, so, yeah. How you hit through? What do you mean? What you did to that? I, I just stopped like making videos and doing stuff on social media and you didn't start again like you're still not uploading you're still not on tiktok no uh because i feel like the audience i have on tiktok would never care about what i want to talk about <laughs> so but on instagram i do like i did start posting stuff that i care about because one thing I saw from like our whole experience with the social media is that if you use it correctly, you can help people. You can like express ideas and stuff and then actually have an impact in some way. I mean, I didn't have an impact 
yet, <laughs> but I just saw the potential and the possibility of how you can use social media to like help other people. And um, it just helped me figure out like how I would want to do that. And I kind of started, but not really, like just, I don't know, figuring out. So you were thinking, fuck, I, I don't like that everyone is, uh, you were like, fuck Fidias. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, di- I did think that, <laughs> but not because of other people. It was just when I was mad at you. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, I wasn't that mad at I mean, anyway, besides the point. <laughs> Social media is a very unrelaxing place. Yeah, it is. So all this made you kind of not not like this world of social media all these experiences yeah or? definitely but i didn't like the world of social media before we even broke up because like i witnessed and experienced a lot of mean stuff that were like needlessly mean <laughs> like i don't know videos that never ever hurt anyone or videos that were just simply for having fun And then, like, people would say the meanest things. And, I mean, I, yeah, I I don't, I just feel like social media gives people, by the way, it's not all bad. Like, I already said before that there's... Of course it's not bad. My HVs are good. (laughs) Some of them. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm not kidding. (laughs) No, but yeah, for example, the videos that you make when you travel, I love them. I feel like they're very authentic and you show parts of the world that like, I don't know, you just bring your personality in the video and you make it very unique. Like I don't see any other uh, YouTuber or creator do do this the way you do. And that's awesome. But I, I just... But- what? Yeah, but, but the, what? the other, what the bad stuff was, what you don't like. About social media? No, about the videos that I make. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of the videos I just don't get, like the thinking behind them, because I feel like, I, I'm sure y- y- like you grew as a person and you changed as a person from what I remember, but I feel like the core of people, it it's the same i guess so um knowing you some of the videos i was like like what like what videos no i don't i don't want no to. say no i can tell you <laughs> uh, later b- by the way cassandra <laughs> asked me to if we get to conversations that uh, uh you don't want to get in you have three skips you can i say. didn't say three no i, I- give you that is gifts. That's not your so, call. <laughs> I you, accepted uh, to uh, do the podcast, uh, so I'm the boss. So <laughs> <laughs> if you want to avoid questions, you can say skip. No. I mean, I will skip, but I, I have like infinite skips. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I skip the question of answering which videos I didn't like. <laughs> okay. Do you think true love exists? True love. Define true love. You said that you were um, the only person you only truly loved, right? That Before I was ever uh, in love. In with. love. Being in love. Oh, I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's so many stuff together. It's like mm, an intermix of mm, like passion and connection, but like the type of connection that I can't really explain, but it's like, energy connection i don't know how to (laughs) explain it better but um it's also like the connection on other levels for example and more more of a way let me find the right word for example on an intellectual level like being able to communicate and talk well with the other person uh like being understood and also uh feeling like you can you think what you have was you interrupted love what you you think what we had was true love i think from my side yes i don't know about you (laughs) what do you think i'm not sure 
generally about this love thing anymore. Why? Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm in love with uh, what I'm doing and I don't think about other stuff. Uh, I'm not sure if love exists. I'm not sure if people should get married. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should get married. I'm just questioning the whole concept that was fed to us by the society. Okay. So you said you're questioning if love exists. So, I mean, I don't know other relationships, how it were for you, but based on what we experienced, you would say that if that was in love, then, like, what was it? Because if you're questioning something, then you must have an alternative for it. Then, like, you must have other options of what it could be, right? Uh, to, to be honest, I have no idea. This is a half question. I'm not sure, like, what what we have was, like, very beautiful and like all the all 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 the aspects about it. But I, I'm like when you say I'm happy, I'm questioning that as well. Like what happiness means? Like I'm 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 not sure what yeah. is. So what is what is it? What I, I just I feel like can I say something? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's great to question stuff. Like it's the only way to figure out, like. I don't know your your yourself. It's the way only only way to figure out what you think of life and everything. But I I also feel like there is no right question and there will never be because everything is subjective. Like I can never explain what happiness is. Sorry, I can never explain what happiness is um, to you, and you can never explain it to me and we can never live the same thing. Yeah, because we have different experiences. We're different exactly. people. We so think different. my point is that it's cool to question everything, but it's also cool to decide what you believe. Why? Because I think it gives you a lot of clarity and peace. No, Why? I'm not sure. Why? Uh, what if that love doesn't exist and so happiness what? doesn't exist? I'm just going to be still peaceful. It's going to be still amazing. Yeah, that's what I mean. For example... So it's not bad. I'm, I don't see anything bad by not believing in love, by not deciding if love exists or not. Okay. Then that's great. I mean, if if you're in peace with just not knowing or not being sure... <laughs> but, but it's very interesting, honestly, to see it. It's like there is all these cobbles, of the, all these movies, all these, like stuff that uh, people think this is love and like the Hollywood painted as a picture of what love is holding hands. That's no, no, no. I mean, th there is a lot of things in this thing. It's like, and uh, there is a lot of things involved and this is like very complicated and kind of confusing topic for me. I, I believe in love. I believe that maybe love is the only thing that exists and the only true Whatever I don't know is that I believe in everything. I believe in this. Also, I believe in no. But you also don't believe it. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you said that you wanted to stay alone after we broke up. I did. <laughs> and you wanted to love yourself, and you wanted to be in a relationship with yourself. How did that go? Great. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know I mean there's like there's a lot of aspects to that for example um, I feel for starters I need to say this I think it's very sad that people that <laughs> uh, from the time that we broke up I feel like I have met and saw so many people who had the same issue as I did that they felt like they didn't really love themselves or they didn't accept themselves or they hated themselves I don't know and for me it's so distressing to see that so many people in the world have this problem and I'm wondering why like why why do we grow up and then like why I don't know why do we not love ourselves as we fiercely as we do other people and that I don't know it's just 
very interesting to me. Like, I really want to find out why. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of stuff. Anyway, side note. Um, I did do that, I think. I still have a lot of way to go because I think it's a never-ending process. But I was alone in the sense that I also could say, like, you could say that I felt lonely for some time. And then I think as painful as that was, it was very helpful because then I learned what would make me feel happy or what would make me feel in peace or what was exciting for me to do and stuff like that. That when I think when you're in a relationship, uh, you kind of rely on the other person for some of that stuff. And I think that's wrong in general, but I think it's just, I don't know, the way it's done in some cases, especially if you already don't know how to love yourself. So I feel like I've learned a lot and I also I also have to, um, I don't know how, maybe this will sound, I don't know if it will sound weird to you, but like throughout this journey, I really, I feel like my faith to God also grew a lot. And like this will be an interesting topic to talk about too with you because I feel like you're in the phase of questioning everything so yeah but I just feel like I was a lot of a control freak in some ways and I just when stuff started being out of my control I was like okay I will either go crazy or just let it go and let it be and uh, the way I did that I think was also through God in some way and I, I feel like it really helped me develop a way of thinking about everything that just gives me more peace than it is. You think that people shouldn't go into relationships if they are not in love with themselves and later they go in relationships? If they don't love themselves, not in love with themselves, you mean? Yes, teacher. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just that if you're in love with yourself, it could also not be the most positive thing. But if you love yourself, like I think that's very, that's fundamental. Uh, yeah, I think I think that if you don't love yourself, and if you don't know yourself, because I also feel like I learned, like I met myself better throughout this time, which was a fundamental part of loving myself because you can't love someone you don't know, I think. Or maybe you can, I'm not sure. But I think that it's very problematic if people get into relationships and they don't... Do you think we had problems in our relationship because you didn't love yourself? Yeah, definitely. Not only because of that, obviously, but it did... Like for me, it did create a lot of problems. And then I think if it creates problems for one person in a relationship, then it also affects the other person. So we were really, really in a relationship. We were like staying together, doing everything together. Uh, it was how much time for one and a half year that we were together? No, less. One year. One year and some months, I don't know. Something like that. Yeah. So, the people want to know. What do they want? To and we wa they want us to discuss about how if you met other people, how you felt when we probably saw that they had a girlfriend for some time. How did that go? And how what's your current status? <laughs> people want to know <laughs> also if you guys want to know <laughs> um, wait I'll answer the part how did it make me feel when I saw you had a girlfriend it helped me go get my bike <laughs> it sounds very funny but I will explain the story <laughs> I, I moved to the Netherlands I don't even know if you know but I'm studying psychology and I moved there uh, in August, and you know, every, I mean, you've been there, it's your favorite country or something in Europe, you know, I remember. Anyway, point is, uh, I was procrastinating on go getting a bike for like a few days that I was there, and then I, <laughs> I just saw 
a video, I think, of you. I, I didn't see you with a girlfriend, but I saw a video of you saying that you were grateful uh, for a girl in your life. And when I saw you say that, I was like, he's in love. <laughs> I was like, hmm, <laughs> nice. <laughs> and that, I don't know how to explain it, but it just, I mean, it, it, I wasn't still, I wasn't yet completely okay. So, like, in some ways, it wasn't the most, like, yay, he has a girlfriend kind of thing. I mean, it, it wasn't, like, the best thing for me in that moment. But then I was... I don't know if I was sad or mad or a bit of everything. I was like, okay, fuck this. I'm going to go get my bike. And I just went out. I put on my headphones and I walked. Like, my my home it was very far from the place where the bike store was. And I was like, okay, I'm going to walk. I just walked for like one and a half, two hours, whatever. And it was great. And it was like one of the things that I figured that When you're feeling bad, just, I don't know, go out of the house. The walls suck when you feel bad. <laughs> And when you saw the island video, um, that was the time that I asked yeah, Olya to be my girlfriend. Yeah, I mean, I, I, was, I think I was, like, the feelings that I felt before were just a bit, like, they came to the surface. But I think it helped me. <laughs> I think this part helped me. Like, I don't know how to explain it. It's a bit weird. But when you see the other person moving on, it's easier for you to be like, okay, it's done. And then, like, it was easier for me to just, uh, quote, quote, remove you from my mind and my life. Because I, I didn't, like, in no way, like, as much as whatever I was feeling, I would never want to... Uh, be the person who like goes into the middle of another relationship like I wouldn't want to do that so I was like okay it's done like you just I noticed when that happened you were stop sending me yeah. as many messages I mean I <laughs> no I I didn't I didn't send I don't think I sent like I obviously I don't know the reason I was sending you before was just because I wanted to communicate was I what I was feeling I didn't want it bubbling up inside of me. But then I was like, I don't know. I think I just stopped. <laughs> it was weird because in the beginning, every time I went to like think about you, I was like, no, like I, it was just uh, repelling the thought when I saw that you had a girlfriend. I was like, oh, no, <laughs> it was like easier to just not think about you and not get involved so it helped for you to yeah it did thanks <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah. but when we broke up with olia what when we broke up with her when i broke up with her did anything change subconsciously stuff obviously changed subconsciously i just feel like i uh i don't know but <laughs> But also, I think that was when I was, uh, like, completely fine, if that makes sense. So, when I say completely fine, I mean I wasn't, I don't know, dwelling on. So, how you deal with relationships? The time that we broke up, like, one and a half year. Boys in your life, like, what was your mindset? And mm. In the first uh, first months, I could not bear the thought of any other person, <laughs> like in a romantic way, kind of other than you. Even though, actually, I think one of my coping mechanisms was to actually reach out to people just to talk, like for the emotional connection, because I think that's what I was missing the most, like the emotional connection. I didn't really care about other stuff so um yeah but then once I started I started being more focused on what I was doing and myself and stuff like that then I just there was a time when I did not give a single shit about that stuff like I was like this is great <laughs> I don't care <laughs> and yeah uh there were like 
a few people that I really, really liked, but like one way or another, it didn't work out. Uh, and there were also other people that I potentially liked, but then I, I don't know, it just, it wasn't there. So I, it, I mean, yeah. So yeah, that's like, I didn't have a relationship after you, but I'm, I'm glad I didn't because, uh, I don't know, it, it wasn't a priority. I mean, you obviously miss connection and affection in that way, but it's okay. It's interesting. Yeah. When uh, when you have multiple relation, not multiple relation. I, mean, I had you, and then I was with Olga. It's interesting how you compare, how you comp when another new person potentially comes in the in your life. It's like you compare. Ah, oh, what is with this? Oh, is she more beautiful? Is she more cool? Is she more loving? Is she like? Did you have this as well? How is? I did. Um, and nobody could joke. <laughs> 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 I mean, I also like from interactions with people in general, not like romantic interactions necessarily. I also found out stuff that I like, for example, that I would want to have in my life that I didn't know before. Uh, so, I mean, I obviously compared, even though I feel like it's a natural thing to do, but it's not very nice because, like, people are different. Every relationship is different. It's just, it's not fair nor to the person that you're comparing to or the person you're comparing with. Because, I mean, it's just two unique people. There's, like, the same way they're similar, they're different. So it's just, I don't know... Yeah, but it's two unique people, but you are the same person. You're not the same person. I mean, it's me, it's Fidia, so yeah, but I, I know kind of my wants, I know, so but I'm not... your I, wants change, right? I mean, I think your I'm, wants... I'm just kind of questioning what you said, that it's bad too. I'm not sure if it's bad, I'm just questioning. Yeah, I'm sorry if I attacked you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, no, I, yeah, I get it. I But I think... It could be healthy to compare in some way to be like because you raise your standards, you understand what mm, you yeah you want. I think that's the the most important part that you understand what you want, what you like, what you don't like, and everything like that. Yeah. But other than that, for example, if you if you set expectations to the other person based on your previous relationship or based on an idea you had of some girl you were in love, I think that's very unfair and unhealthy, and yeah. it sucks. Also, when you're in a relationship and you compare with the previous, you, you say it to the person or you do something, it's like, fuck that, yeah. It's yeah. Like, yeah. I, I mean, it obviously depends, like, what? But I agree that it wouldn't be very nice. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I know I wouldn't like that. Because I don't think people like living in the shadow of someone else, of, especially if it's... Uh, I don't know, in a romantic relationship. I, I found uh, kind of a lot, very interesting this love thing, this relationship thing, because I got to understand a lot of things about myself and what do I want, what do I don't want. And it's kind of crazy how far society's ideal couple is <laughs> and my ideal like what, tell me. Very far. What? Tell me. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if it's true or not. Or I'm, if I'm 100% true, uh, right? But I don't want to live with a person <laughs> that I will be married to. It. <laughs> what? You don't? <laughs> yeah, because I find a lot of uh, joy for being alone and more creativity and more joy through. Maybe we can have a... How like houses next to each other? <laughs> I don't know, but Einstein was doing that with his wife, so I got yeah. inspired by that. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, this, there is a lot of uh, like for me, like catching up daily with the person is like it's a nightmare. Like I, I want to be f 
free to not talk to anybody for days in a row and like I I I have through my lifestyle and through the stuff that I do is kind of it makes sense for me that I have these uh, needs but yeah it's it's interesting what society tells you to do and when you understand kind of yourself, I'm not sh- saying that this is uh, true or is I, I'm true to say to do this and if it's respectful to the get that I would be mad or whatever to do all these things but yeah it's interesting yeah I'm not sure if it's necessarily society that puts that stuff on you because like some for example if you take it at the beginning before like I don't know the hunters and gatherers whatever Ooh. They that you also like, <laughs> like how did they live? Do you know how they lived? Did they all live together? Or did they all live alone? Uh, they all live together. Yeah, so I think it's like part of our nature to want to be with other people. I want to be with other people, but only half day. <laughs> <laughs> but you already said, yeah. No, I get it. I get it. I think that it's very, very. It's very cool that you n- kind of figure out and know what you want. Um, yeah, kind of this is the secret, of, well, I don't know, of life for me. It's like Socrates said self-awareness is like everything. And like if you are self-aware that you like this, and you like this and you don't like this, like you can design your life to like it. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you. I think it would be definitely harder for you to find someone to subscribe to that. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm cool enough. <laughs> to find one. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's it's nice uh, to see different perspectives. I mean, I don't agree with you, but <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay, I, I I have a good question. I don't know if it's a good question. How was it moving to the U.S.? And like, I think it was like a very big and maybe even difficult step for you. Uh. No, actually, it was very, very cool. Like, because of the stuff that I was doing from before, it didn't feel difficult, felt kind of piece of cake. But it was interesting to go there. It was very romantic, actually, because I was like, oh, I'm alone in the United States, and I have to find a way. And I have not a lot of money. I have to... Kind of Los Angeles is very expensive, so I was like, okay, I'm, I'm taking the buses, and I'm proud, and I'm happy, and I'm fighting for what I, my dream is and whatever. So it was kind of a very romantic period for me and very beautiful. It was like, oh, I was like working, s- like, I wanted it so bad, so it was, yeah. It was very, and when it started happening, like getting some recognition from the things, like, okay, wow. Like I was very happy because it brought me growth. It brought me to meet cooler people and to surround myself with more clever people than me. And yeah, it, yeah, the United States part was very good. I love the United States. I want to live there. That's really cool. Oh, what what was the most difficult thing though? Like about the whole thing, the whole experience. <sighs> Managing a business is fucking hard. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> oh, why? It's like a video. It's like a video. What do you mean? Videos, it took me like two, three years to learn how to make a proper video. Like mm. the difference, people, emotions yeah. that has stakes that people want to watch until the end. So it's like I have to understand how to manage people, how to push people, how to cash flow works, how to... A lot of money passed through my hands, and I didn't manage them properly. <laughs> <laughs> so, but did you at least learn from what you? I think so. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, it's it's managing a business. I think it's like Navy Seal. Like uh, if you see the ads, it's. Uh, it's the art of being a Navy Seal. Like only five percent of the business made it after make it after five years of and they're profitable, something like this. I'm not sure, but yeah, it's as hard as Navy Seal. So I'm like get through, through all this stuff. But I think I, I found exactly what I uh, like. This YouTube is made for me. Like it's like something that involves business. It involves whatever. 
having a lot of growth, also being stupid and doing <laughs> the stuff that yeah, you want to do. So it's kind of very beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Question. But you and you, you were studying uh, sports science when I met you. And we met and you dropped out. I, I think I was a bit involved in that because you saw me travel and doing yeah. all this stuff. And I'm you grateful for that. I mean, I think I also expressed it before, but uh, like, I don't know, doing now something that I genuinely, truly love, I was like, I don't know, like, you you do you. how 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 is psychology like what do you do it's great <laughs> and how is studying in university it's super cool because the the system they use in the university i go to isn't like the type of thing where there's a lecture and they're talking and then you're just listening and then trying to memorize like i hate that i i think it's a terrible way of teaching people it has to change but this is different it's like for example it's like we're here now. I'm happy that you're passionate and excited. I was, <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Don't multitask. Multitasking is not, is, it's fake. It doesn't exist. Okay. Based on psychology, <laughs> leave the pen down. <laughs> okay. Good. We so, can debate that later. Okay. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> I have science backing me up. <laughs> anyway. Science is just the best story that we have so far. What? Science is just the best story that you have so far. True. So science is not... Anyways, continue. I Laws mean, of but physics. It is. Is, uh, anyways, who knows? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> continue say about your psychology yeah, stuff. I don't know to which extent you can use physics to explain what's going on in your head. So like you said, the best thing we have now is science in terms of biology, psychology, whatever you want to call it. So... I'm using the best source we have to tell you that multitasking does not exist <laughs> okay. the way people think it does. I mean, I think it does exist on some level, but not. Anyway, besides the point. <laughs> so you think you can become a psychologist without going to university? I think you can be a good psychologist without going, but I think it will be... <coughs> Did you miss that? <laughs> I have a really good friend that does that, so no. <laughs> I'm kidding. But anyway, um, I lost my flow. <laughs> you were saying about you can do psychology without studying the oh, university. Yeah. yeah. I, I believe, thank you. <laughs> I believe that the skills you need, you can develop them without being at university. But I think it will be harder, like also... Let's not forget that we are living <laughs> in a like a world that has a lot of systems and laws. So technically, if you don't have, for example, I think in the UK, my friend was telling me, I'm not sure if it's a master's that you have to have or a PhD to be actually like a clinical psychologist. And um, so you can't do that. I mean, you can't yeah, have a title. It's, it's a different thing. The st system that we live in is yeah, stupid. But also, and it's a different thing in that, that case, I, it's just, uh, I feel like I'm not, I'm, I'm not the person that thinks that grades or, uh, papers can, uh, dictate how well you do your job. But I think that, for example, clinical psychology is like, as, uh, being a doctor and I'm obviously biased. I know I'm biased, so I'm just putting it out there. I, I have the awareness of that, but, um, I, like a clinical psychologist would talk with people who have uh, disorders, who might have suicidal thoughts, who are going through a really, 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 really hard time that are diagnosed. Maybe they diagnose them. So um, I think that it's like there's some stuff that are very sensitive that I feel like it's important to get the right guidance because I've listened to stories of people... That I'm sorry, I'm talking too much. But no, no, please. I, I, I've, li I've, I've heard stories of people that went to psychologists and they had a terrible experience. And then the way this has like an impact on your life is is very negative in my perspective. Because, for example, I heard stories where someone diagnosed someone else, 
like a, a psychologist diagnosed a person with something pretty serious, like uh, like a disorder, like in the first two sessions that they saw them. And that's like that's the first thing I even learned before I went into university that you cannot do that. Like there there are <laughs> there are criteria for the time period for for the symptoms people have. And then I was like. Wait, what? Why, why? Why is this person allowed to do that? But that has nothing to do with the that they might have been to university and they might still suck. I mean, yeah. I get what you're saying. I'm just saying. But that. the the interesting part here is that it seems that you found a tribe there that they're crazy about this and they're good to talk about psychological stuff and like it helps you. Like for me, like I found YouTubers to be around, like help you to be with. Yeah. Mm, Or no. Kind of, but I don't know. I I feel like it was kind of very hard for me to find people that I really vibed and connected with at university. Uh and like even though I met a lot of people from my course, I didn't necessarily vibe with them because of what we're studying. I think what you're saying like I One, I couldn't agree more that you find people that have the same interests as you, similar uh, beliefs, values, dreams, and then you instantly connect, and then it's great. Um, but it it wasn't like that for me. Maybe I didn't give it a chance. I don't know. Maybe like I did made mistakes in that area. But uh, I I I found people that might be on the same level that. Not that I'm like on some level. I'm just saying that, <laughs> like on the same wavelength. It's a better way to say it. On the same wavelength as me. That no, you can say level. Maybe you are level two and still okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I mean <laughs> wavelength. Uh, and they might not be studying psychology. So I mean, for me, it wasn't. I think the same way it was for you. Because as I understand, like you found people who are YouTubers and was like you were learning from them. Clever than me, a lot clever than. Me. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. I mean, that's great. I didn't experience it yet. Maybe I will. Maybe the more involved I am in university stuff, maybe the more people I meet that are more into the areas that I also. It's been one and a half year. What did, uh, what did change like? Some things that change in your mindset, in your, like what you learn. Like, I think big changes, shift to your mindset or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like the I cannot list stuff. Like one thing that I did say mention is that the presence part. Uh, like. I feel like I'm more able to just let go, just like I don't know, just have faith that everything will be fine, and also just be in the moment. Uh, it's difficult. It's more difficult for me to do it when I'm around other people. So I like doing it when I'm by myself. Which I also, I feel like throughout this journey, I encountered a lot of stuff and thoughts that helped me understand you better maybe in some way even though it was just assumptions me yeah because i feel like you were the first person i experienced to i don't know if i'm wrong maybe it's just in my head like that you can tell me but I, i feel like you were the the first person that i saw being so in the moment just like looking at the sky and smiling and i could feel like you were feeling it like in your heart like you would i i don't know how to explain it but i feel like i could see the feeling in you but i could never feel it which it's obviously not the same I remember. feeling yeah we were looking at the stars and i was like wow and you're like yeah <laughs> yeah no i mean i was i was very i was like in my my head knew That it was great, but my body and I don't, I don't know. I could say soul, my heart, whatever. Like all the particles of my body were not there with me. Like it was just a logic, but then there was nothing actually real, quote quote, there. And I feel like I don't know. It's just the my favorite thing. <laughs> I, I would say it's it's really nice. Just I don't know, sitting somewhere, preferably in nature. Uh, and just being there, and 
it was very difficult for me to do that before, but then it's nice. Uh, that was one of the parts. But then I think there are also a lot of other things that changed, which, like, I think you would, I don't know, I felt like you would know them if you, like, if you think of how I talked before and how I talk now, or if you see me just, if you experience me for some time now, I'm, I'm hoping that you would understand the changes. But even if you don't, it's fine because I do. So, sorry. What are our relationship? Teached you. Taught you. Yes. Say it again. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Flashbacks, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> mm, what did it teach me? Oh, so many stuff. And you can answer it first. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so first, it was you were the first person. To kind of on my life, my life was like very free person, very very free. Like you are the very person that the first person that I actually lived with, and like when you live with one, you have to accept each other. You have to consider each person needs, and it was the first time that I was stopped kind of being so much about me, and it was okay about us. It was hard for you though, like. Like, there was a long time until you actually started, like, uh, considering more, like, what I needed or wanted and stuff. Like, it was a process. But, I don't know, I'm proud of you because you, 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 I feel like you got there for a big part. Anyway. Uh, another <laughs> thing that, that I learned, it was... Uh, it's good to share moments with people. It's good to do all, like, I, I love the, having a person to talk when you're down, when you are, like, having, like, sometimes when, when, when I'm alone, I, I miss this. This is one of the things that I, I miss, like, just laying there and, like, we're hugging, like, just oh, so many problems, but just, like, that that care that you have with the person. And I, I learned that I love that a lot, just to have a person that cares about you. And I also, I, I learned so much stuff about myself, about what do I want in my life? What do I like in this relationship? What Cassandra's qualities I like? What all this stuff. So yeah, a lot, uh, a, a lot of things like this. Also the breakup teach me stuff as well. So the whole experience was was interesting. What did the breakup teach you? Get the alcohol outside your house, out of your house, if you want to stop drinking. <laughs> you, that wasn't that the was, breakup, but yeah, you, the, I remember you saying that from long ago. Yeah, it worked. Like what, me not hearing about you, me not like help so much with the process, and, and also it's kind of a romantic process. Like it's. I enjoyed it so much. Like a lot of nights I was thinking about it. You know, like, oh, and like, it's very beautiful those nights actually. It's like, and. <laughs> they are, but it, yeah. If, if it was for six months, maybe I was going to be. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't, don't flatter yourself. It wasn't like every night for six months, but no, I'm kidding. But, no yeah. I get but it. yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Project. Like, actually, I feel there is. I became like a person now that I, I, I don't like being happy what? always. I, I enjoy so much the pain, the sadness. Of the, no, no, it's like even more fun than the actual happiness. I don't know. It's like, it's very interesting. So I got to, so getting to enjoy the breakup, it was like, oh, wow. Is that, and that I went another one recently with uh, it's like very interesting the thing. So yeah, now what you learn. Thank you for sharing. It <laughs> 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 just felt like the right moment to make this joke. <laughs> but um I think from you and our relationship in general, I would just list a few things because there's so many. Uh, that I kind of, I don't know if it's from you or if it, there was like some part of me that already had 
that inside of me and then you just made it come out. But I, I learned that anything you want, you can, you can make it happen. And even if it's stuff that it's like almost impossible, like even if it's something that people would tell you there's no chance that's, that you're going to do that. I feel like I learned how to be more resourceful, how to like think in different ways. Uh, yeah, that's one thing. Um, I also, I think I also experienced more uh, the side of me that like craves adventure. And uh, I think I was always spontaneous as a person, like even before I met you. But uh, it was nice to find like a person that uh, would like really, I don't know, make it more. Even though sometimes I have to say it was overwhelming because, but this was my issue because I felt like if I didn't go through with some stuff, you would like stop thinking I was cool or you would stop loving me, which might have been the case, but then I shouldn't even let it be the case. Like for me, I should have just, I don't know, I shouldn't have let it be, a stressful point for me is the last couple of months before we broke up was that I was forcing you to speak to me in English. Remember that because I, I, yeah. wanted, I wanted to learn yeah. English. And <laughs> because I was in Cyprus and I really want to be an English speaking YouTuber. So and I didn't know very good English. I still struggle. I'm still struggling with this topic, but it's a lot better now. Yeah. Uh, how did like speaking both our native language is Greek mm. so how did speaking for the last three months of our relationship in English do you think affected our connection and because I remember you I were I think it did in the moments where we would uh, just spend time together and I mean in the practical stuff like I don't know the because we were also kind of helping each other out about stuff, like in general in our relationship. Like for that stuff, it was fine. We could communicate properly. But I think a relationship also entails more deep conversations and more, I don't know, emotional conversations. And I feel that, that in that area, it might have, I don't think it was such a big effect, but I think it did have like maybe a slight negative effect for us be just because we, we, it was harder for us to actually communicate properly what we were feeling or. And communication, the words is very important for, uh, because you were, sometimes you were like, oh, you said this and like I didn't mean this, I was hard, yeah, but yeah, exactly. English and. Yeah. And I also, I, I, like, when I went to, that's interesting, because when I went to the Netherlands, I was, like, speaking English with everyone. And uh, I think at some point throughout the time, I was, like, I don't know how <laughs> this will sound weird, but I feel like everyone has different parts of their personality and different parts of themselves. So, for example, my, the part of me that is more, like, um, playful, I would say, I never experienced in English as much. I don't know if playful is the right way to say it, but whatever. And I was like, maybe I can't be playful in English, which was very stupid to think, but I did think that. And then I met other people that were like English speakers and they just, uh, like people sometimes bring out in you certain aspects of yourself. And I was just like that part of me that existed in the Greek and I was super comfortable in doing it in Greek also came out in English very uh, naturally and I was like hmm maybe I was wrong and maybe it just needs time for you to um, learn better speaking a lot more. of people say like in different languages they have different personalities yeah I think that's I think that's that's partly what they mean like I, I don't know but maybe what they mean is just that it's harder for you to express yourself in some aspects yeah, I told you multitasking is not a thing. What did I say? 
<laughs> I'm trying to find the next question. <laughs> That's not nice because when people are speaking to you, they have your full attention, and then you can be like, give me a sec, that's fine, and then you can just read. And then yeah, but then the audience will leave because I gave you a second, giving a second to people. You haven't seen me in one and a half year, and you're prioritizing your audience over me. Okay, nice. Okay, <laughs> read your question. Let me know when you're ready. I remember what you said. You were saying, let me think. <laughs> I miss this fight. <laughs> That's not a fight. It's just you being an asshole. No, you you <laughs> were sorry. saying about the English language and people they have two personalities and you were elaborating that. Yeah, what did I say about that? About in, yeah, it's true that people uh, I didn't think say it's true. people think this, but I think it's something else. So I'll continue saying what you were saying. No, I just said that I think what people might say about having different personalities in different languages is just that it's easier for you to express certain parts of your personality in a certain language. So, for example, in English, you might sound like a smart ass. And then in Greek, you might sound like you might you might be more playful and make more jokes and have better humor. And then it, I think it's just like a learned behavior kind of thing and then if you like speak English every day of your life then different parts of your personality will pop up according also to whom you're speaking with who whom or I don't know who you're speaking with so I think it might have um, like a basis what they're saying but I'm not sure it's uh, necessarily different personalities in different languages you are in love with psychology parts of it because, for example, I, I don't particularly enjoy... Like, I didn't like some stuff that I did. But other stuff, I'm like, oh, wow. But I think in general, you could say yes. Uh, one thing that rocket science, I believe, is more difficult, is more easy than psychology, than uh, social sciences. Because yeah. it's like, you, you're just talking about you have no basis, you have like rocket science, it's like, okay, you put this here, you put this here, it flies to the moon. Yeah. And we, if it doesn't fly, we know why it will fail, we know the energies, we, know, we can yeah. identify, it's like, yeah. is it? But if one child was committed suicide, it's like so many stuff that can happen, so many things that uh, Contribute. Uh, yeah. went through that. You don't know it. Is it the DNA? Is it something that someone taught him? Is it something that uh, his family developed through uh, years? Like, but I think that's also that's also I agree with you, and I think that's also one of the most interesting parts. That, for example, I was I was reading about depression, and we know we I think in general I also thought that before I found out that we don't know shit. <laughs> I thought we knew everything about depression. I was like, yeah, we know uh, this hypothesis and this hypothesis and we know why like people are depressed. We know what causes it and where it's coming from and everything. But then I, I actually had to read about it and then I found out that they don't know. They, they they know parts, bits and pieces, but the puzzle is still like all over the place. They, they Because... Exactly what you said. There's so many factors that contribute to stuff. And also, um, there's this thing that it's called uh, comorbidity, which basically means, it means, don't freak out. <laughs> it means that, for example, someone might have, I thought you were going to burp. <laughs> I didn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Some people uh, like might have depression and a personality disorder at the same time. So that's comorbidity, like how when they're commonly together, the two disorders, for example. And uh, because of that, that's that's one. By the way, I'm saying also part partly it's stuff that I read, partly it's my opinion, so I'm not saying that it's right. Just, yeah. <laughs> that also, that makes it even more challenging because to find out more about the disorders or how people experience certain stuff because um, you can't really find subjects, even in experiments, that are actually like the same in their conditions because of high comorbidities or... 
It's so fucking complicated because I you know. can give advice to a person, do that, and that will be complete opposite that he should do because you don't know exactly the person, you don't understand him exactly how he. Yeah, I think also that one of the things that I learned is that. I think people think that psychologists, like if you come to me and I'm a psychologist and you tell me I have the X problem, I think people think <laughs> that I will tell you, okay, do this. But that's like far from what happens. I mean, if the process is done properly, of course. A, a psychologist is just there to uh, to help you figure out what's going on and help you figure out what's best to do like they give you the guidance they ask you the questions they help you through like specific practices maybe to get over your fears or discover your fears but it's kind of it's you that figures it out like i was yeah. kind of sabotaging all this stuff to be honest like in the past or uh, psychology you're going to go and like uh but after understanding that Life is like very complex. I was like, okay, maybe there is some stuff that you can learn, you can understand about yourself when you go there. It's a time for you to reflect. It's and, yeah, definitely. And I'm not, I'm not sure if it's good or bad, but What's maybe good or bad. Maybe with the right, uh, with the right person, will be helpful to do a psychology ah, session. Ah, you mean as a, a psychologist? Okay, yeah. I my opinion on that is that I think going to a psychologist can save your life in some way or like really really truly improve it. Or ruin your life. Yeah, because it's also it's very like everything in life. Like it's like everything like a knife. If you use it, probably you can stab yeah. someone. If you use it, uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, it's no, I just think that it's. Uh, it's sad that sometimes uh, people have bad experiences with that because... And generally the topic is like people think bad of the people that they go to psychologists. And yeah. that's the bad part about it, which uh, I'm, uh, that I think it shouldn't have this bad. It doesn't deserve this stigma. bad stigma because... Yeah, I agree. But maybe it's because of stuff that happened in the past of like... I think it's because of what you said in the sense that um, I think it was kind of a taboo in the past to say that, you know what, I go to... Yeah, I have a problem with the psycho it. Yeah, it's like people that go to a psychologist, they must, like, something must be wrong with them, but... Psychopaths. Yeah, or crazy. whatever, but I, I, I just think that we've been shifting towards a different perspective on therapy in general. I think that people they slowly understand that your mental health is as important as your physical health yeah. in the way that and they before, both interact. before, in the years, probably it was not as important, your yeah, mental health. people yeah. didn't even talk about it that much, which, I mean... I'm not sure, we were not there, but probably. Yeah, I had this conversation with my friends. I think you will like the topic, but maybe we don't have to talk about it now. But I will tell you so you remember. <laughs> so, but I was telling my roommates that... I believe that people who lived like before civilization were happier than we are on average. And they were saying that, like they were rightfully saying that we can't test that, which I agree. Um, but they were also saying that, for example... Maybe we can test that. If we, um, I think the only way you could test that is if through you biology. S simulate <laughs> the same circumstances. I don't know if that would be ethical, though. <laughs> you can do it maybe on the PC. Like, I don't know. Like, I have no idea what I'm just saying. The people that they PC? know this stuff. How? Uh, on the computer, they, they run s simulations to solve problems of biology, of evolution. And maybe they can. I don't know. Like, But yeah, let's but go back to the topic because... So the question is, if people were happier in, back in the day... And or not. But when I say back in the day, I don't mean like a hundred years back. I mean yeah. like way back in the, when when people lived in nature, when there were like I don't know, there was no electricity. You no, know? I mean there they obviously had their difficulties, and like since we evolved, and I mean I don't know if evolved is the right word here, but since 
everything changed to come to today, I guess there were a lot of difficulties. I mean, I'm not oblivious to that. But I don't know if oblivious was the right word either. Anyway, but the point is that I just feel like they they didn't have much in material stuff and they were like living very simply, like in nature and everything. And I feel like that was harder in some parts but so much easier on their mental health <laughs> i don't know if that is bullshit but so, that's my opinion uh, so i was thinking about that because i went to hadza in africa i went mm-hmm. to the tribe that they are hunter the gatherers and i lived with them it was one of the most relaxing relaxing feeling i felt ever like they were Nothing to think about. Like even if I had stuff, messages like the environment, they didn't give a fuck. They didn't. They only care about killing animals and eating meat. This is like uh, and joking with each other and making fun with each other and laughing too much jokes or or something like this. So it was very relaxing in the hunter gatherer thing. But I'm not sure if they were happier. But I'm. But the hunter gatherers now, but uh, probably the last ten thousand years, which the art- agriculture revolution started, and we slowly formed civilizations. Like it was, they were killing witches because the uh, what? one one girl, uh, if they wanted to kill her, they said she's a witch, and they were throwing her in a in the river and she said they said if if she flows then we, she is a uh, uh, she's a witch For real? and they were killing her so there it was and as i started understanding a bit of history and all this stuff this is, the circumstances were very bad like now our quality of life our is like so much better and like people were probably not as happy in the last 10,000 years, I believe. But I'm stupid, by the way. I'm not sure about anything that I'm saying. This is just some thoughts. But probably when people were living in the, uh, in the, in the w- woods and like together, like moving, like huts of people, something like this, probably they had a lot less stress. And one thing that stuck to me when he said it in the end of the video, he said like, oh, here, you don't need to pay rent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, you stay in the bush <laughs> and it's, it's, you don't need to pay food. You don't need to do anything. And I, I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to do anything, actually. I can stay inside the bushes and like live my whole life. And it's like free and it's like, yeah, you know, I think it's like we could learn a lot from uh, the past in that way, like how people lived or even now because there are people who still live that way. I I feel like a lot of stuff we have now are privileges that we're very, very, very lucky to have. For example, I don't know, the ability to reach someone at the other end of the world and help them or impact them in a positive way or uh, clean water like things that we even take for granted such as clean water or food or warmth when it's cold or I don't know somewhere to wash yourself or <laughs> go to the toilet or whatever like like we have so many so many privileges and their kids was dying at three years old yeah, for medicine. diseases exactly and, like, all this stuff like I feel like we're so privileged I just feel like we can learn so much from those people in the sense of Obviously, I mean, not obviously, maybe not for everyone, but happiness doesn't uh, depend on stuff, like material stuff. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe pleasure depends on material stuff, but I don't know about happiness. Anyway, but uh, I think what, for example, what I care about is not necessarily happiness, but peace. Because when you're in peace, you enjoy the happy, the sad, and it, like you said before, like you like it when you're sad. I feel like the only way you can like it when you're sad is when you're in peace with, I don't know, everything. You're like in harmony. <laughs> you just feel like it's okay that I'm sad. It's okay that I'm mad. It's okay that I have the problems because 
it's okay because it's all okay it's fucking cool yeah <laughs> i mean that's just a different way we express it but yeah it's it's yeah just part of it but i think that what we can learn from them is this that you you don't really need all that stuff to just be okay but not okay in the way i'm i'm fine but in the way that you're truly okay like you you have everything you need in the moment and the yeah. reason just last thing i'm sorry the reason i'm saying that is because when you have a disease when you don't have water when you're fighting for your su survival there's some parts of that peace that are taken away from you because like your human instincts they just yeah they're awakened so you we cannot think if yeah. your basic human needs are not exactly. met. Exactly. So we're so lucky to not, I mean, some of us in the world are so lucky to not have those problems. And then we still have so much pain and so much suffering. And that's very sad. It's interesting, actually. And there is a lot of things that contribute to this thing because now we became like, oh, we we see Instagram and we think everyone's life is perfect yeah. and our life sucks and the truth is like everyone's life sucks and... Do you think that pain and suffering is the same thing? I'm not sure. Like, I feel pain, but I feel pain uh, more like in the physical thing and suffering is more like in the intellectual... Psychological thing. Psychological part. I'm not sure. I have mm. no idea about English. No, it's not about English. It's about... Yeah, it's terminology. It's like what yeah, this but, word means, but like I think context. On terminology the word. can go like up to a certain point, but then it's more what it uh, symbolizes for you. For example, for me, pain can be both physical and psychological and emotional and whatever you want to call it. Uh, but then if you suffer, I think you can go through life. I think you cannot go through life without feeling pain. But I think you can go through life without feeling suffering, without suffering. Because I think that the suffering is what you make out of the pain. So like you're, I don't know, we broke up. It was pain. But what, what I made out of it, what I was telling myself, like he doesn't care or uh, I will be alone or I don't know, it's like making stories out of it, like taking the pain and defining myself because of it or because of what happened or making assumptions about stuff. I feel like all of those stuff take pain, which is just an objectively, like a thing. I don't think it's objective, but whatever, it's a thing. And then they, they, they turn it into suffering. And I feel like if you, I think there are ways that you can just feel the pain, whatever sort, and then not suffer. I'm I'm not sure about this suffering and pain thing, but a lot of people say like we need the, our goal should be to lower to human suffering in the world. But I'm like, okay, when I suffer, I learn so much. So why don't we increase human suffering? I I'm not I'm not saying we should <laughs> kill people, or punch people, or like no. make people suffer. But there is so much from the suffering. Like I don't get what people when people say. That's that's the distinction I'm making. I think that pain is important. Pain is inevitable. It's important. It's helpful. You can learn from pain. But that's pain. I think the suffering part is what drives people crazy. What makes them like feel like being in pain is bad. That that that's like my distinction. And the I know it sounds just as terms, but like for me, it helps me just in the way I think about stuff. Like, I have the choice to take whatever is happening and then either We don't suffer. have free will, ladies and gentlemen. I don't agree. We don't have choices. Power of our choice. Anyway, continue. I'm sorry. Mm, I'm not sure I agree with you. <laughs> I, I don't think I agree with you. But I also, I agree with the willpower thing. I think you have limited willpower. So in some way, I agree with you. But anyway. Anyway, yeah, that's just what I'm saying. That I was, the past one and a half year, I've been really searching to find the answer to the question, to what's the meaning of life, why we're here, and what we should do about it or something. What do you think it is? I don't know, I'm asking you. 
Oh, you're asking me. I don't know either. <laughs> I think that anyone who's like, oh, the meaning of life is this, then I think they're just being naive. <laughs> Because how can you know? <laughs> like, I we mean... Can't have, we can't have opinions. Like, I agree, but I think the... the and having opinions giving, doesn't make us naive. Yeah, but also I feel like it's super important in this case to give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Because you're defining your whole existence and if you're, uh, it's good to have opinions, you're right. Maybe I was wrong when I said that, uh, like, if you answer this question, you're naive. But I think it's good to also understand that you don't know because <laughs> that's the objective truth, <laughs> that you don't know because who defines that even? Like, I believe in God, so I could say that I believe we're here for X and Y reason, which I'm not going to get into now. But then you might say that we're here to, I don't know, make babies and not die. Which, I mean, I get both <laughs> perspectives and maybe both are true, but who knows? <laughs> How did God help you get through the breakup? You said that before. How does, uh, did uh, believing in a higher force help? I think I, I, I mentioned that I, it, like... Having faith helped me let go of control, but I also I think of I think of God uh, in a similar way that I think of presence. So, in the moments that I told you where I like I might just be sitting on my rooftop and just watching the sky or whatever, as romantic as that sounds, that like it's that moment when you're just there. <laughs> You're just there, and it's, yeah. For me, that's, I'm not saying that I achieved it, because I'm sure I have a lot more to feel in that area, but I feel like when you're just there and you're being, you're, like, in the presence of God, if you may. I don't know. My, people might think I'm saying stupid stuff, and that's fine. It's just what I feel. So, yeah. And I also think of God as, like, the connection that we all have with each other. Like, I don't know if you ever experienced just sitting somewhere and feeling like you're one with everything. Like, feeling like the sea in front of you is like, it's just like a part of you. And then the sky is a part of you. And then the bird that's shitting is a part of you. And then everything, like, you're so connected to everyone. And I think that's also, like, part of, like, God in that way. I don't know. If I, I think I'm talking too abstract. Also, I think this is too high. I don't know if it's in your face. <laughs> yeah. uh, you saw me today. It's been one and a half year. What is surprised you about? How did I change? I don't, I don't think I was surprised by a lot of stuff, except the part where you said that you think you would want to live by yourself. Because <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Like, it would surprise me with everyone if I heard that because it's just different. But that's cool. For me, it doesn't feel like it's been my half year now. Yeah, me neither. I mean, like, when I talked to you from before, it, it didn't feel like... I, I was telling my friend, it was like, we just spoke yesterday or something. But at the same time, no. Like, I don't know, it's interesting. A lot of things happens, uh, happen in one and a half year. Yeah, when... you got an air rack tattoo and Mr. Beast, right? Yeah. <laughs> They're not very nice. But it's <laughs> I'm kidding. I mean, <laughs> She's not kidding. <laughs> I mean, they're not nice in the sense that they're not aesthetically nice. Uh, but you don't care about that, I know. <laughs> so. so how did this go? Like, what do you think? Like, it was a bad Thing after all that we met like that after one and a half year mm. you think yeah I think it was that. nice because I feel like we talked about our opinions about stuff and it was actually interesting for me to see maybe how some uh, of your perspectives changed like what is the same and blah 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 uh, I think the part I would change about this whole thing would be that I would like to see you before the cameras are here. <laughs> I would like, like to be like... Hey. And I wanted to kind of get this moment on camera, like me watching you yeah. for the first time. So, yeah, actually, um, 
I say I texted you and you were a bit hesitant in the beginning of us doing that. In the, I was in still the... hesitant like now, like before you walked in, I was like, oh, is this a mistake? <laughs> 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 I mean, it's just that it could obviously seem like you just wanted to do it just to like, I don't know, use this for... Which is one of the reasons I'm a scumbag, to be honest. Like, yeah, but also I appreciate your honesty and I was like... Okay, maybe I also okay. kind of used it to to also like make <laughs> to also tell you that okay, then we're doing what I want. <laughs> so <laughs> I also used you, in case you were wondering. So, <laughs> so you think it's it's is it's good, but you were going to change the part with the cameras for the first time. Yeah, because you wanted to say some honest stuff. Some uh, this is. I just uh, what you were afraid. No, I'm I'm. I don't I don't know if I was afraid of something necessarily but I just I appreciate the idea of someone wanting to see you and not caring about other stuff and I feel like we kind of owed it to each other and that's the bad part like I would really respect it if you just wanted to see me and be like I don't know just show up or tell me meet me here whatever that time and like just knowing that you wanted to see me now I know that there are more motives in you wanting to see me. Like it wasn't just that you wanted to see me. So that makes it not very nice in some ways. Yeah, I understand, I think. And, but uh, yeah, when when I texted you in, on WhatsApp and like it took you two or three hours to think about it and like you texted me at 4 a.m. in the morning, something like this. Oh yeah, I think it's okay, we can do it. But <laughs> with these requirements, A, B, C, and D. <laughs> but I, I was very happy and yeah, I'm very grateful that you chose to come because uh, this is kind of a big thing for me because I love this kind of video and like the podcast and starting. And I was like, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I love you. Thank you for the conversation. Thank you as well. And now we're going to spend the whole day together without cameras. Is that a high five thing? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye, people.